So we check to see if the test case ID matches. If they do, we run it, return some result, which is a pass or fail. And then that's it. We continue along our way. So this is pretty much the outline of any kind of framework. Now, I want to add one more layer to it in our case, which allows me to control for cross-browser testing. Now, this script is not configured for cross-browser testing right now, just because I didn't have time. I had to create this for you guys, you know, a few hours. So usually, I may include cross-browser testing option here. And so what happens is I can put in different kinds of strings, such as Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer 8, Internet Explorer 9, Chrome, Firefox. And now every single of my test cases will be covered in five browsers. Isn't that pretty awesome? That is excellent coverage, and your management will be very impressed with that. Just make sure you don't get ahead of yourselves, and remember that cross-browser testing is not as much of a priority as functional testing, right? So until all of this stuff here exists and we cover the main functionality for the application, don't even worry about cross-browser testing. Pick one browser, probably Internet Explorer if you want, and just work with that, okay? Don't jump to cross-browser testing before your functionality is developed. But anyways, so if I want to add this layer, all it is is just an extra loop that allows me to run every single one of these for every single one of these. Let me show you how that looks like in English. So once we imported the data sheet, then we run the code from the first row of the test cases sheet to the last row. So before that, what we need to do is get an array of all the browsers and run all of the code through the array. And so then, all of this code happens to be this. Okay, so now we got one loop, two loops, three loops. And then that's it. And inside of that is our logic. So let me quickly take you through one more, just so you guys don't comprehend, and then we'll actually get into the coding. So we got our test case ID, went to the test step sheet, we found our test case ID, which matched up, and we executed the keyword. Now remember, we're still in the loop that runs from here to the end. It's the last internal loop. So it's going to finish executing, then the loop outside of that is going to execute, and then the browser loop will execute. So as we're running towards the end of the file, we come down here and look another test case ID matches because it's test steps. You're going to have multiple of them. So once it matches, we run over here, execute this keyword, and then we come over here, it matches. So then we execute this keyword. You guys get it? And then we're going to get to this point. At this point, the test case ID is not going to match because what we stored was test case ID 001. Now this is TC004. So this loop will stop, it will exit, and we will come back to this loop. And now we're going to run onto the next row. We're going to capture this test case ID, and then we're going into the test step sheet, and we're going to look for that test case ID there. And then we're going to do the same thing, and so on and so forth, until this loop is finished. And this loop is inside of this loop, right? So this will finish with Internet Explorer, then we'll come down here and do it with Internet Explorer 8. Let's assume this is Internet Explorer 7. I just had to do it like this for now just because I had to pass the browser process to it, but otherwise I'd have like, you know, IE789 here, and then I can execute on all those. But yeah, so we'll execute in IE7 and execute all of these. Then we'll go to IE8, execute all of these, IE9, and so on and so forth until you have ridiculous amount of coverage done extremely fast with your automation framework. Okay, let's get into the actual script. So, here's the framework, guys. I like to separate into three sections, which I call it importing data, right? Because that's the first thing that needs to happen in our framework is the import of the spreadsheet. Then, I have a section that is the actual logic for the JavaScript. 
And finally, I have a section to export the data. And that just involves exporting like results. Maybe you have some kind of screenshots. Maybe you need to do some cleanup. You can do all of that there.